Death be not proud. What's up, faggots? Holy Diver here, and uh, this this episode we're talking about orcs. But before we get there, we got the uh, grand prize winner here. So let's get the, the bag here. Oh, don't want to look into the bag. Come on. All right, let's get the bag here. I thought a ball went into the inner bag, so hold on. Let's get underneath there, play some pocket pool. Oh, got to get into the bag first. Ah, ah. Let's get in there real good, real nice and good like. Oh, dig deep. Dig deep, who's gonna win the Night Stalkers? Who was the hardest pleasure? Okay, number 11. Let's see who that is. That is Michael Jacobs. Michael Jacobs, you win the Night Stalker box set. I believe he might be one of my Canadian viewers. So you, if you're watching up there in the Great White North, they try not to freeze. And don't forget, only hoser cards come with beer, eh? All right, so Michael Jacobs, you are the winner of the Night Stalker bundle. So, uh, there, there, there is a pity prize here. There are two pity prizes. Let's see what we got. Oh, you can't win again, Michael Jacobs. Don't worry, I, there, there are 15 entries on the uh, extra credit giveaway, so hold on, hold on. Here we go. Number eight. Who is number eight? for the first pity prize. Uh, all right, that is Gil Garrett. You are number eight. You win the Boromir. All right, all right. So let's, uh, let's go into pity prizes again. This is for the giant bones dragon here. Let's get in there. Let's get in there, pity prizes. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, number five. See who number five is. Who gets the dragon? That's the Nacho Man Candy Savage. You get the Reaper Dragon. Gil Garrett, you have won a Boromir model from uh, the Lord of the Rings range. Peter Sculpt, really awesome. So those are the prize winners. I'm sure glad that's over. And uh, let's get into the orcs. All right. Let's get into the orcs. Uh, let's get into this shit. So. Uh, I, I don't know what they were thinking here. Uh, th there were some really huge dumbasses that wrote this book. Uh, when I say dumbasses, I mean big, fat, dumb, beta male, underfed, effeminate, twink, dumb motherfuckers. Bunch of slap-jawed faggots around here. This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaur. I've never seen a list written so bad in my entire fucking life. Even though I've gotten my ass kicked twice by orcs, pardon my French, I do have to record this shit while I play and learn how to do it. So, uh, let, let's just go over there. The, the biggest overall gripe I have about the orcs is that they've increased your points by an average of 10 for every single fucking unit. What, what was the thought process behind that? When I talk, let, let's Let's talk about what a soft nerf is real quick. If I go over here to, I don't know, ogres. Let's see here. What is, what's a soft nerf? A soft nerf is the siege breakers. They only lost thunderous one and, and they're no longer crushing strength three. But they went down ten fucking points. When, you know, if it were, if it were an orc unit, they would have lost all of those benefits. They would have lost anything that was good about the unit and they would have gone up ten points. So that's a soft nerf versus like a hard as shit, fuck you, orcs nerf. Um, so here we go. So let's go into orcs here. Uh, I am not happy with the way they wrote this list. I think that they could have done a way better job. There were some dumb motherfuckers who wrote this. Uh, when I say dumb, I mean dumb with a capital D. Uh, that's why I'm wearing this shirt because I'm not going to be kind. Uh, I never used the Morax guys. Uh, they're fearless now, but I still think they should be uh, 16 fearless on the, on the uh, troop and maybe 165 points, not 175 for the regiment. So, huge kind of a... Uh, oh, and they nerfed their attacks. They don't have 25 attacks anymore for a regiment. They still hit on threes, but this is one of your few units that hits on threes. So, kind of nerf there. Uh, the long racks, I do like the regiment. The regiment is at 155 points, 13, 15, 15 attacks, and that's not too overcosted for what you get there. 
Um, but the problem I have again is that uh, this is like one of the few units, the long, the long rats, the spear regiment of orcs. Uh, you don't pay a premium on the points for that. It's 155 points, but you are paying the extra few to have that phalanx for five points. It shouldn't be more than 150. So uh, the uh, nerve on the on the horde. 2123, but kind of overcosted at 255. It should be down no more than 230. Um, I, I don't see why they have to be so much more expensive than a horde of boomers, which is way better. Like, literally. Uh, just, I don't know. I, I, I think it's way too overcosted, and I don't think you'll see a horde of long racks that, that much. But the regiment isn't bad for the points. Young Axe, I don't really give a shit. You gave us cheaper, worse orcs. So now we have orcs that are 190 points for a horde, and you can just charge into them all day and wound them because they're not defense five. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking with that. I think it's a completely stupid idea. And now you have to pay a premium for a horde of axe. A horde of axe went from 205 points to 215 for no fucking reason. And then I, if I want to pay 220, it can be brutal for a turn. When it should be brutal all the time or something. Or at least, at the very least, melee three. Let's talk value for a second. Let's talk value for a second. I'm going to get more out of a horde of ogres than I am a horde of axe. I've got the speed, I can deliver myself to combat, and oh, I've got three extra attacks if I want it. Alright? So I don't know what they were thinking here. The saving grace of the axe, and I'm going to get pretty long-winded, so I'm going to need water. The saving grace of the axe is uh, the uh, Legion. The Legion at 310 points, if you were to bring two of those, that can be somewhat scary, but also very hard to maneuver around. Uh, that's going to be a big, two big footprints that you've got to figure out how you're going to defend. And uh, you can bring troops of uh, cavalry or regiments of trolls to maybe uh, make a line, you know, but defending them will be really hard. Delivering them into a combat will be, uh, will be average at best. If you're lucky and you were able to get a Bane Chant off that turn, you can deliver a... Uh, you can deliver a, a 30 crushing strength to attacks, which isn't bad. And at 620 points for two legions, that's that's not bad for what you get. That's 600 points in an orc army is one attack wing. The way I look at it, it's not bad. So that's that's kind of the the uh, positive right there that, is that you have access to the axe legion, and it's not bad for the points cost. But the standard horde of axe shouldn't be more than 200 points. If anything, they should take out the law, the young axe, and put the normal horde of axe down to 190, because you need bodies on the field. You're not, you're not weapons, you're not melee three, and you just, you're paying a premium. This is like brutal for one turn, really. The or, that that was the best that you can be brutal for one turn. Pay five points. What idiot thought of that? I, I, I want, like, what the goblins got. Extra attacks. What the ogres got. Extra attacks. Really? I can be brutal for a turn when it's like, ogres are brutal all the time? Even you, puppy dog. Hey! You need to grow a sack! Oh yeah, they're brutal. Okay, sorry. So, uh, long axe, uh, great, uh, axe legion, pretty good. Um, another thing we get into the great axe. Horde, a little bit overcosted. I do like the regiments. They went up. They went up from 145 to uh, 150 now, or I think they were 140. I think they went up 10. I like the regiment at 150. You get 12 attacks, melee three. It's okay, and you get the 14, 16, which is where most of the orc regiments should be. They should all have a nerve of 14, 16. They are so fucking stingy with that nerve. They're all afraid of this one little fucking war drum. Like it's gonna change the fucking scape of the game. It's gonna change everything. It's just not fair. So uh, from a from a from a tournament standpoint, orcs really got shafted. But we'll see. I don't know if they take first at Adepticon. Knock on wood, Holy Diver was wrong, and he didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. Uh, Skulks, they went up 10 points, you lost a point of speed, and you went up 10 fucking points. What idiot writes that? You lose, a, you're no longer speed 6, you're speed 5, but you have scout. Why can't I be nimble? Why can't I be nimble for, for uh, 75 points? 
Explain. Why can't I have nimble speed 5 at 10? Because then at least they're fucking takeable. They're takeable as shit if they're nimble. But no, we don't get anything good. It's just a harder fuck you. And uh, we don't even have steady aim unless we take the little shitty character that they made for us. So, well, that that's uh, that that's the bullshit right, uh, part right there is that Skulks went up 10 points and they're no longer uh, speed 6, which was kind of helpful. Okay. Gore Riders. Uh, they go up five points for no fucking reason. They go up five, you, you see a lot of, you, I'm sensing a pattern here. Everything has gone up in cost and you're not getting any bonuses for those points increases. Who the fuck thinks of this? What, no, 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 no. What idiot thinks of this? That we're gonna increase their points cost by an average of five to 10 for all of their units and we're not giving them jack shit for that. So just, just so, so you know, uh, I, I've really studied the list and um, I, I've really, really just, it, it, it's a load of shit and bullshit and Jack, but Jack left town already. He was already long gone the moment they got to Orcs. Um, Skulk Outriders, if uh, they, uh, oh wait a minute, so Gore Riders, uh, they went up the five points and they should be 14, 16, let's face it. Give us the cavalry at 1416. We win up five points. We got nothing for it. Fuck you. I gotta pay 195 points for brutal? For brutal for one turn? Like that's gonna change? Have you seen the way I fucking roll, you fucking morons? Fuck you. Alright. Skulk Outriders, if they made models, maybe. Uh not really impressed. Uh just I, I fighters, yeah, they are nimble, but. 10, 12, I can get that way cheaper. I can get something that's nimble 10, 12 way cheaper. I mean, that is just, again, this is a cavalry unit. It needs to have higher nerve. That's one of the reasons orcs kind of suffer is because they're cavalry units. Oh, oh, but you can mount the war drum on a fucking uh, chariot now, but that, that costs 30 points. And in an army where you're already stressed to find points, uh, that's kind of brutal. So then you go to paying 110 points for this thing to uh, basically be in. Uh, oh, you could pay. You could pay more than that. You can pay another 30 and have dread. But to keep up with your uh, cavalry, uh, that you know you're you're paying a huge premium for that. Huge premium when they shouldn't even need it. They should already just be 14, 16. So that's Gore Riders and uh, Skulk Outriders. They uh, they do have sh uh, short bows and steady aim but they could have given them a rat of four. Make it takeable. Steady aim with rat of four with seven attacks. I don't even get eight attacks. What idiot thought that one up? I mean, the normal troop over there is 10, 12, again, and it's 125. It's, a, I mean, the, it just, the points are called, or what I call a butt fucking, all right? So uh, next we're getting to Orklings. Orkling, the uh, regiment, they went up. They, they went up 10 points, and the uh, normal red, I mean, the, uh, the the horde went up 10 points, and the regiment stayed the same. I like them in regiments. They're still really takeable. Uh, horde, two hordes will probably tie down a flank and set you up for a giant charge or something. I mean, anything is better than nothing, but this is just something that's still one of the irregular units. Skulk Outriders are irregular, and it's just, it's there. And uh, Orklings are still still okay, it's okay by my book. And then uh, we finally get to uh, trolls. Trolls are still uh, 190 points, and they're no longer irregular, but they butt fucked you. It's almost like they studied how I played my army and said that's broken. You can't do that. You notice how the healing charm isn't a fucking item anymore. So I can't give a crudger my healing charm. I can't put the war drum next to my trolls, and I can't give this guy Shroud of the Saint and Heal too, and keep my trolls alive and deliver a bomb onto the enemy. That, all taken away. All taken away. This war drum only works for orcs now. It doesn't work for trolls, which I think is bullshit. Because you're taking options off of the table that were really reliable. And w w when you kill everything that was really reliable, you're just a fucking moron in my book, and uh, you have no right to write rules. You're a fucking idiot, and, you know, I hate you. There you go. Uh
Be gone from me now. Be gone from me, you soy boy beta cop. Be gone! Um, like I said, uh, I mean, they act like, uh, 16, 19 on nerve is a butt-fucking, so. What do they really know anyway? I mean, it, 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 you could deal with it, because, you know, I mean, it wasn't that bad, but it was reliable. And when something's too reliable for the orc list, I noticed that they do everything in their power to squash it, because let's go back over to Ogres, see how they're doing here. Uh, Ogres, uh, let's see here. Horde of Boomers is still 230. Why didn't they get a points increase? Still piercing. Oh, and they got Steady Yang, you know. <laughs> they didn't butt fuck the Ogres. Let's see. Oh, Horde of Shooters is irregular now. But, you know, you're still probably going to see them. But they could have they could have butt fucked them at 260. You know, so I'm sensing a pattern here, you know. Uh, Warriors could have been butt fucked at uh, Melee 4. But no, 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 no. Orcs are fine. So let, let, let's keep going. Let's keep going with this butt fucking that is Orcs here. Uh, gotta get past Night Stalkers. Here we go. Page two, finally. Uh, Gore Chariots. Uh, they kind of, uh, they kind of turned out the winners in this. Uh, the Gore Chariots, uh, let's see here, where are they? Gore Chariot Regiment at 190 points. Uh, again, everything went up because they have the troop now. They reworked all the points there. Uh, the troop is worthless, let's just face it. At, uh, I mean, at 12, four, at, uh, it's a solid 12-14 with eight attacks. But the regiment for the money is just really good. Uh, I don't mind the legion. The regiment at 190 is just really good. And you get the 1416 that the gore riders should have. So it, it's they're kind of one of the few winners that you have. You have 12 attacks, melee 3, your defense 5, 1416. It's, it's not bad, and it's on the cusp of good. It's on the cusp of decent. Skulk Raider Chariots. These were, when I saw the entry for this, this was my one huge hope, and then they butt fucked them as well. Skulk Raider Chariot Regiment only has six shots. Why can't I have 12 shots? No, 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 explain that to me. Somebody explain that to me why my gore, why the one chariot unit I get can't have 12 shots. Because at least then, at least then, my chariots shoot better than everybody else's. And, uh, you know, I didn't get the nimble. Notice that. I didn't get the nimble. They, they should have been, uh, at 145 points, I should have had something that had 12 shots, nimble, and crushing one, because then I would have been cooking, because it's still a regular, I would have been cooking with some fire there. It would have been decent, it would have been a better take than other people had got, than other armies had. And they kind of, uh, the, the uh, six shots... Steady aim, rat of five, it is what it is. You're talking about an army that has the shittiest shooting options ever. The shittiest. Let's go over to Ogre, see what they get for shooting. Oh, they have access to the goblins. They get sniffs, they get spitters, they got boomers, they got boomer chariots. They've got, let, let's see here. Oh, wait a minute, they got shooters, boomers, boomer chariots, bigots, uh, goblin slasher. Uh, because this is all the units. They got spitters, sniffs, warlocks, and a boomer sergeant and Kuzla and Madfall. They have 10 shooting options. And all of my shooting options are gay with a capital G. So it's just like, this is supposed to be a motley. I mean, if you make, or if you do orcs right, you don't need to bring uh, Varangar into this. You don't need Warriors of Chaos because orcs will do just fine. But. Uh, that aside, uh, the uh, Raider Chariots, they're okay on the points, but they're just not going to deliver any extra shooting, and they should be nimble. So, Fight Wagons, huge premium, not as good as Mincer Mobs. Uh, Mincer Mob has 21 attack, D6 plus 21 attacks, and it's 200 points. It's dash 16, and you can spam it. It's good. It's, I mean, I like spamability. You can't spam these things. If you buy two of these, and they're, uh, let's see, they're also irregular, uh, that's a huge dropout in points. I really don't mind the Legion. That If you can get that, if you can deliver them, uh, you're going to do well in combat, and that's one saving grace there. But uh, I really think that you should be at probably dash 22. I think the nerve should be up a little bit higher. So you should be at uh, 17 with a regiment, 20 with a horde, 22 with the uh, legion. But uh, uh, 
that's that's my review on the fight wagons. Giant is always a staple. He's 1820. Strider, Fury, pretty darn good. You're probably gonna see it in lists. Uh, just uh, you need you need something that moves through forests freely and can actually deliver the goods. Giant, you're gonna see him. So uh, the war drum, it's got dread now. It's not, at least they didn't nerf it to rally one you, because you notice you don't even have the banner of the griffin anymore. So you can't have a mini one over on the other side of the field for 20 points. They took that away. So anything that you did have that was a staple for the orc list, they just they stripped it away from you. I, mean, I, I just picture some gay dude over in the UK stripping some some young midget. Uh, of all of his clothes, be like, there's nothing you can do to get away, little buddy. That's what they did to the orcs. And he's tried, or Peter Griffin and the bull. There was nothing Peter could do to stop the bull from raping him. And that's what they did to the orcs. So, Wardrum, uh, you can give it dread, but that comes at a huge points cost. And plus, wherever you put the Wardrum, dread is only six inches. Usually, the Wardrum is busy hiding. Behind the shit, you know, it's it's a support it's a support thing. So I really think that you know they, they missed an opportunity here to give it some extra attacks. Maybe if it had six attacks, uh, melee three, it could have been up there just as a support unit, more as in a combat role, and maybe buffed its nerve up to fourteen and kept at eighty points. Maybe, but this is something that's always hanging out behind your orcs. So and your your, your drum, you, I think the drum range is only. They really, uh, they really did a number on there. The Crudger went down, but it's still 130 points to bring him on a gore. 130 points to bring him on a gore, and that's what he caught. That's what he used to just cost on foot. So what was the point of that? Why does it cost 30 points for him to be on a gore? I think the gore should cost no more than 15 points or something. Give us, give us a missile to shoot at the enemy as. In terms of chaff or something, that's hard to get rid of. Uh, at least they didn't nerf him on the nerve too much. I think he was always a uh, uh, crudger. He was always a uh, twelve fourteen, but still ninety five points is somewhat decent for a crudger. But yeah, when he's mounted, he's still the same cost as he was when he was on foot in the last edition. Let's see here. Uh, Oh, the biggest, oh, sorry, I thought it said bigot for a second. I gotta learn how to read my chicken scratch Arabic handwriting. The biggest nerf of all time was the crudger on the chariot. Here you had a unit that was somewhere in between the uh, crudger on the slasher and the crudger on foot, and it wasn't overcosted. You had something that was nimble, you had something that had fury, you had something that was 14 16 with seven attacks. You throw the blade of slashing on that guy for a for 190 points, it was all good. They nerfed the shit out of it. They dropped the points, but it wasn't a soft fucking nerf like the uh, Ogre Siege Breakers got. We're going to drop it by 10 points. Crushing 2 is still pretty decent for 240, but it wasn't a huge nerf, but it was a it was a soft it was a huge it was a soft nerf for the Ogres. Big butt fucking for the Orcs. Uh, old stats 185, speed 7. Uh, melee 3 plus, defense 5, 7 attacks, 14, 16. You had Fury, you had Nimble, you had all that good stuff. Now you're 140 points and you have 5 attacks. You're speed 8 with melee 3. You know, you're slightly faster in your nerve 13, 15. I, I really think that the old Chariot stat line, way better. That was something solid. You could have that lead your entire, or you could, be, you could take two of those and those could lead your army. They were decent counter punchers. And any counter punch they had, gone. About the only thing you got now is something fancy that can pick up objectives that... It, it's just like, I want you to picture a, a guy who used to... I want you to picture an old James Dean. Uh, the porn star who fucks professionally when he's too old and nobody wants to look at him anymore. That's what they did to the orc crudger on a, on a, go, on a gore chariot. Troll Bruiser, uh, 15 points and nerfed. Went down 15 points, so it's uh, 110 points. Still really decent, uh, in my opinion. You give him the inspiring talisman. You can you can use him as a dual purpose. Uh, I think he's better, than, slightly better than the guy on the chariot now, uh, because you still have the nimble and you're paying less points for something. So it didn't make any that nerf didn't make any sense because why don't I just why don't I just uh, bring him and then I'm still 10 points cheaper than the new fucking chariot they gave me. 
Flagger, oh boy, nothing happened there. 10, 12 nerve, one single attack. And this is, this is where you kind of get good. Uh, the Crusher, he's not inspiring. I, I really think he should be like 11, 13 on the nerve, slightly higher than the 10, 12. Uh, and it should be 75 points for the 11-13 to put him on the gore. You can put him on the gore for 25 points, and uh, the Crusher becomes a decent war machine hunter. This is one thing that you can shoot out there like a missile, up uh, like, like you can run him with your trolls. You shoot him out on the very end of the precipice or something like that, just full on 16 inches of movement, and you make your enemy choose. They're going to let the Crusher go by to get behind him, and start go and start going for the uh, for the characters, or are they going to focus on the trolls? Because if they go to the crusher, you've lined up a, a perfect charge for your trolls to come in and smash whatever hit the crusher, especially if it's a big flyer. So uh, the crusher, okay, at seventy five points, uh, something it's just something decent. I don't remember what it cost in the book. It was a, it's a relatively new unit. Now you get to the to the god speaker. Uh, the least they could do is give him inspiring. You're still at a lack of inspiring units. You got the flagger, oh boy, oh boy, you still got that flagger at 50 points, but it's not like I can get a flagger and give him the healing charm and give him some functional use. They took that away. So what am I going to do? I'm going to pay 30 points for the boomstick and get one wound to turn? Fuck you. What the fuck were you thinking? Uh, Godspeaker, still gonna, you're still going to see it. They did give him that... Uh, Plus three to dice, but that's only with the orc uh, keyword. He has to be next to orcs to get the plus three. So if he's running with trolls now, he ain't getting the plus three to his uh, dice. So you have to keep everything in line and uh, maneuver a certain way so that your wizard will get plus three to, so that he'll get plus three to heal your trolls. Going to be really tough to do because you can't, you can't hang back with this army again. Ogre's got 10 shooting choices. All of your shooting choices are crap. If you're lucky, you'll deliver two wounds a turn with your uh, with your skulks, and that's about all you're going to do. And maybe if you're lucky, you'll you'll pick up some weight with the fireball. I've seen it happen. It happens. But uh, again, uh, he's just he's just going to be there uh, casting buffs for your orcs. Um, they dropped the ball there. They should have made him inspiring. And, you know, I, I can see why the Necromancer isn't inspiring, but still, uh, he's just going to be, he's probably going to be mobbing with trolls with the Shroud of the Saint because you've, you, you're investing 190 points for two units uh, each there. But he's there. You got him. No inspiring. Sculpt Marauder Chair, uh, Sculpt Marauder on a Gore Chariot. This is slightly better than the Crusher, but. And it can grab objectives. That's about all you've got with this guy, is that he's slightly better than a Crusher. And uh, I think the uh, Marauder Chariot coming in at 90 points. Yeah. You, you could at least grab an objective with this and maybe take it somewhere in a loot scenario or salt the earth scenario. It's not a, it, it's not a huge loss if he holds an objective for an entire game that the enemy can't get to because they're busy fighting elsewhere. So that's the Skull Marauder on the Chariot. That's eh, versus 75 points that can't claim an objective. So you're, you're paying the extra 25 points to be able to pick up objectives with that guy. Um, Morax Pain Splitter. Now, I, I thought, when I saw this, I'm like, this is cool. This is cool. But this is where it, this is where it like goes all limp dick on you. He can throw and he has a throwing axe. Keyword, not axes. Like he doesn't get to use all six of his attacks to throw six axes, which would have been like fucking excellent. He has a he has a single piercing one axe that he can throw at you. That's rat of four. Now this is a lost opportunity where it could have made this guy uh, basically fucking awesome for 105 points. You could have brought these guys and they could have been your chaff. This could have been your war machine hunter. He can still be your war machine hunter. What's his? He's still speed five, so he's not any faster, and it, it kind of sucks. So you can give him the scouting thing, and maybe he can scout in and start uh, harassing characters or something. But uh, yeah, this is uh, something that just they drop the ball on. You have a single, th you have six attacks, but and, and your dash, uh, your dash fourteen. But uh, damn, uh, I, 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 why can't I have six? 
piercing one attack, so at 105 points. Give us something. But again, they didn't give you anything. They they make they give you some some stuff that's almost cool, and then it goes all limp as a dick. So that that's that's the uh, Morax pain, uh, man splitter there. Uh, the Skulk Stalker. You can spend an extra 65 points to bring a guy that can give that can give you steady aim. So if I bring three three troops of Skulks with this guy. Uh, that's 320 points to have something that gets steady aim, that lost a point of speed, that's not nimble. You see, there's no good synergies. The eye in the sky thing for the goblins, really cool. It's a workable, usable synergy. Whereas you had an opportunity for synergy here, but you butt fucked us on speed and you couldn't even make us nimble and give us some fucking options. So, I, I mean, that you would have seen that in every single army. If these guys, if the Skulks were nimble, people would have been spending that 320 points. People would have gone and bought more Skulk models to bring three troops. Because now, with that, with that dumb motherfucker, you have all of the chaff that you need to be successful. Especially in objective-based games. And you have something that can go up midfield and bait charges for your orcs. Which is good, because my footprint's pretty big here. But it's okay, as long as I have decent chaff units that I can take. So, that's the, uh, that's the uh, Skulk Stalker. We're going to go down to Gakamak. Gakamak went up 20 points uh, from 210. Uh, what the fuck? They gave you absolutely nothing for those point increases. Again, this is what you call a butt-fucking. I don't know what the thought process was here, but it's some of the shittiest writing I've ever seen. You have almost synergies, but n nothing really usable. Uh, you know, good, I mean, I don't know why I don't have full command of the goblin list. I don't know why ogres are married to the goblins and orcs aren't. Are goblins not green skins? Just asking. Uh, so I, I really think that you could have. Uh, I, I really think what they should have done was throw in sniff mercenaries into the list as irregulars, and that would have been the uh, the insta-drop, that would have been the insta-take there for your chaff. People would have been taking, even if you could only have them in troops, that's still better than everything you got, because at least then you have vicious in melee! <laughs> oh, fuck, man, this is rough. Uh, whip the Outcast, 15-point increase, no longer elite. Uh, they, nerfed, uh, they nerfed some of the spells. Uh, he went down to heal two from three. And uh, he has the shaman roll for the dice increase. So that's that's really like orcs kind of turned into the uh, big loser here. And uh, I, I, I don't know how to take that. I don't know what the thought process was for the points increases throughout the entire army that give you absolutely nothing. The, the decrease in speed for the skulks, no nimble on the skulks. I really thought that the skulk raider chariots would have been nimble. They didn't even give you that. And then you're, you, I mean, if I had 12 shots with my skulk raider chariots and my chariots just shot better than everybody else's at 145 points, that's takeable chaff. And you don't have it. All you got, I mean, basically all you got for chaff are either bruisers or orklings, in my opinion. Uh, because the uh, 105 points of uh, Skulk Outriders, <coughs> I don't know. I don't know. They're, 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 gonna, they're just dealt with too easily. Where, and again, your nerve is too low. When you're putting something out there that moves at a speed of 8, has nimble, and uh, can just get out there ahead of the army, this isn't, you're not going to waste 100 Wait a minute, is it it's 110 plus 140 points to mount one of these on a chariot to support chaff? So that's a synergy that doesn't fucking work. You got seven bow shots at rat of five, why can't I be rat of four? So anything that I do have that, that shoots, I'm paying a premium for and I'm not and I'm getting one less of everything. I'm get, I should have an 1113 nerve. My troop of gore riders should be an 1113 nerve. I should be 1416 on this because, again, that's an extra 140 points to bring in something that doesn't even get an attack buff for being on a chariot. You know, so they gave you some 
Really good options, but like the big winner of the Titans here is uh, the Giant. That's the only Titan choice you've got. They could have given you something like an Arachnorok Spider or something that the Orcs ride on, and they didn't even give you that. So the winners are going to be Giant, Chariots. Uh, I've, I've written a little list here. Uh, you know, it's just, it, it's a lot of pain. You, you went up from 185 for no reason. They didn't get, you can't even bring the skull pool on this regiment. You can't bomb somebody with one of your only melee three units and have a skull pool. Why can't I have a skull pool on my cavalry? You gave it, you gave us the motherfucking option of on almost every one of my infantry unit, on every single one except for young acts, but I can't have a skull pool on my gore riders. I can't be brutal on the turn that I charge you. With cavalry? What the fuck were you thinking? What idiot wrote this? So, uh, what have I learned? I learned that Mantic, or, or, or these, let, let, let me list these guys by name, because if you see one of them, I, I, I advocate violence towards these motherfuckers. Hold on here, hold on, let's see. Uh, credits, credits. Yeah, Matthew James, Daniel King, Chris Morris, Jason Mormon. Mormon, <laughs> and Jeffrey Swan, I advocate violence for those guys. Just punch that motherfucker's lights out. They better, I better not see you guys at tournaments, because if I do, I've got your fucking number. All day, every day. And what you gonna do when Holy Diver Mania runs wild on you? Zero fucks given here. Uh, yeah, just a really shitty list build. Uh, and you got nothing for your points increases. You have no synergies like Eye in the Sky. You don't have a command of goblin lists, of goblin fuckery like the ogres do. You don't have any breath weapons. You, you basically trundle forward and you hope for the best. Now, somebody might find an eclectic mix that works. I'm not saying that they can't, but based on what I've made a list based on what I've owned, on what I own model wise, and this is literally the best that I could come up with. Uh, you know, I mean, again, I had a really elite undead army facing off against something that in hand-to-hand -hand is slightly better than undead anyway, because guess what? Most of the undead shit hits on fours too. So it really does, when, when you have two armies that are evenly matched melee-wise, it does come down to who rolls the best. Especially if they're somewhat, uh, because Brad, every time I play Bradley, he gets better. I've noticed that every time I play, if I have one person that I play constantly, they get better consistently every game. So, which is what you should be doing is bringing up people in your community to make them better than you, like Aiden. Uh, so, I've written a list based on what I own. I kind of worked it out in formations. So, I have a horde of great axe again, 150 points. One of your few melee. This is defense four. I think that the uh, great axe should have been defense five for 150 points, and that would have been an insta-take. There's not a lot of insta-takes in this army, and that's the problem. Like, if I were to think Empire of Dust, the first thing I think is Enslaved Guardians, Enslaved Guardian Archers, two regiments of those, backed up by a Lich who can surge them forward so they can get in range of things and shoot. And that's 18 shots, 18 fucking shots from each regiment, and that's consistent damage output. And that's a synergy that works. So I've given a lot of examples of synergies that works. Uh, if uh, the goblin, if I'm facing off against goblins, and somebody's like, "I in the sky that unit, your chariot unit," and he's he ranges in on three war machines with me, he might devastate me, you know, and then hits me with the lightning bolt and does me for seven damage. I've just lost all my combat effectiveness if I don't get in the, if I don't fight something next turn. So. Horde, so let's go here. We got the uh, Great Axe, a Horde of Axe, a Regiment of Orklings, and a Horde of Great Axe, and then backed up by the War Drum, a Crudger on foot for the Inspiring, and this will only cost you 755 points. I think you're getting a good wall of wounds here that isn't really that bad. Uh, 755 because these guys have fire oil. Why not? It's a situational item, but there is a lot of stuff out there with the regen special rules, so this will give you an additional crushing, maybe. I, I, I like fire, oil, it just, it's an okay, it's for a take all comers list, that's an okay five points of uh, usage that you get there. Um, next formation uh, that we have here in the army, 
I did this in little formations. We got a troll horde with uh, Aegis of Alohi so that they uh, heal up. Uh, one, no matter what, they get a wound back every single turn. And then you have the other troll horde with the stain stone so that they're at least 15-17, uh, which helps. They're backed up by a bruiser, a crusher on a gore, and the shaman with the healing stuff just to kind of help them get along, mitigate wounds, so that this is a direct threat that they have to worry about. Uh, this guy's inspiring for this whole little, for the, the bruiser's inspiring for the whole little formation there, and they've got to worry about him. And uh, again, this is, you, you, you sneak this guy up, so if he's there, he goes up 16 inches, they've got to choose. Do they go after the crusher, or do they let him pass? Especially with their fast shit, so they're going to probably deploy faster shit against the trolls, and that's a good option to have. I'm going to throw my crusher up. You're either going to, I mean, they're going to chaff you out or go past you and start harassing your characters midfield. So that's my thought process with the gore, with the crusher on the gore. That's only seven. This whole formation here is only 700 points. So you're at uh, 1455, and then finally, the for, the third formation. This guy with uh, uh, another bruiser with the inspiring talisman. So, and uh, the reason why I went for the bruiser because it's it's still slightly better than the uh, what do you call it? It's still slightly better than the uh, crudger on a gore chariot. This guy is nimble. He can pick up. He can go. Let's say this is an objective over here. I'm going to go six inches. Turn around. And uh, it, let's say I, I have a turn so I can actually do this. Turn around on the objective, pick it up, and then next turn I'm going to take the objective away. He can do that, which is, which is really good. And so you do have that nimble option there. And then uh, two regiments of chariots, again, 14, 16. They'll work really well for you. And a crudger on a winged slasher. And uh, that comes up to 795, which brings you up to 2250. And this is only based on the model on the models that I own. I mean, it's I'm still going to play orcs, but I'm going to do so begrudgingly because again, you have a lack of good synergies that work. I'm not saying that there aren't good units in the army, it's just backing those units up and making them successful like 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 I said, the uh, Empire of Dust build where you have to or where you have two uh, units of enslaved guardians and they shoot 18 shots each and they can just be surged up into position to shoot because yeah, that's really good, you know? And I wouldn't be surprised if... I haven't looked at the list. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't give them steady aim or move and fire, but who knows? Uh, you know, you just don't have a lot of shooting options, and the shooting options you do have are literally like lightning bolt three. You're going to get one. One to two a turn if you're lucky. So, again, I like Skulks, but the fact that they butt fucked them one point of speed for no reason and raise their points cost for no reason, I mean, at least if they raise their points cost, to, I mean, speed five with Nimble would have been really good. Nimble should have been an insta-take on the Skulks, but you can't even get that. The Skull Pool, again, not being able to be brought on Cavalry, you can't even bring the Skull Pool on your Chariots, so it's like... If you have your hitting units that move really fast and you can't be brutal for that one turn, that's called the butt fucking. That's just a synergy that doesn't work. You're relying on an army that's just basically what? Infantry? And this is a game of maneuver. This is a game of maneuver and that's the biggest problem here. So, I've got your shopping list coming up. You, uh, let's see here. Oh, and, oh, and then one minor note. Uh, Instead of taking a Crusher, you could take another Wizard next to your Orcs to kind of buff them up because he does get the plus three to cast, but I, I, I don't know. I kind of like the Crusher on the Gore. It's a, def it's a, decent, it's a decent Chaff drop, plus, uh, you know, if he gets into War Machines, you've got nine Crushing Strength to uh, melee attacks that hit on threes, so... As a hunter for 75 points, it's really good. I'm not knocking the guy on the... I, you do have... Nine, if you can find the 90 points and put a guy on a, a Skulk Raider Chariot, that's good. You can pick up objectives that way. But uh, this guy, he's just a good little slip-in midfield uh, harassment guy for a character a character sniper or war machine sniper that they, that they either have to ignore or destroy. Or shoot off the board because he's only 10-12. Again, he's a single character, might be hard. So my shopping list, you'll actually like this shopping list here. 
Uh, it's a lot cheaper than the last one. Uh, first thing on there is two box sets at $89.99. That's $179.98. This gives you all of the toys. Uh, then two or chariot boxes at $44.99. Uh, that's $89.98. Uh, two Godspeaker models, $25.98. Two Crudgers on Gores at $39.98. And then one Orc Crusher on Wing Slasher, $44.98. And then one more drum. That will give you everything that you see here fielded. Did I mention the two Bruisers? Oh, two Troll Bruisers at uh, $29.98. That will give you everything that I fielded. I think this will be an okay list, but then again, you know, I mean, I, I have yet to go to a tournament and actually do something worth a damn, and if I do, I'm, I'm not bringing orcs. I'm not bringing orcs, because it, it's they, they really put them into a situational corner, and I think what they could have done was open up the goblin list a little bit to them, the same way, they, the same kind of loving they gave the ogres, and they didn't. They, they just gave them a huge butt-fucking. Points increases in which you get nothing. Uh, no inspire, still a lack of inspiring. Uh, they gave you options for shooting that are completely not even halfway. And uh, the chap options that you do have, uh, let's face it, 60 points for this, still probably going to be an insta take over the over the uh, over the uh, unit of uh, sculpts who should be nimble. So. Um, I know that this hasn't been the best review, but and I've advocated violence against some people. Zero fucks given there, but uh, what's said is said, according to the Goblin game. And I wish the Goblins would take all of their firstborn children away. So, yeah, th they did not get any love. And when I when I get to Undead and Ogres, because I own Ogres, you know, it's um, it's gonna it's gonna vary. My level of fun is going to vary. I mean, I only had two. I only had like two real gripes with the goblins. Most of them involved the snips when they should have been vicious in shooting or just had the ranged attacks in. So, uh, orcs are a different animal now. Hopefully, you can find out something better. But I would be surprised if somebody took orcs to Adepticon uh, the next year and got first place, and because maybe they saw something that I didn't, or maybe everything. And part of winning the tournament is everything has to kind of fall in line. Matchups do count. So this has been Holy Diver giving you the dirt on the orcs. As you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But until I see you again, uh, keep playing Kings of War. Find something to do with your orcs and stay metal, my friends. Even you, puppy dog. Hey, you need to grow a sack.